Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with part two of the um, gatefold journal that we're making for the Autumn Garden Journal. The Autumn Garden Journal is the um, giveaway for the 2000 subscriber grand prize giveaway. So um, I'll talk a moment about the qualifications. So um, in order to qualify for uh, grant, the grand prize and the second prize, um, you'll need to go to all of the videos in the two playlists, which I'll talk about here in a second, like each of the videos and leave a meaningful comment in each video in the two playlists. So the first one I believe only has, uh, the uh, Autumn Diary Journal has I believe four videos of that process of making it. And then this one will be uh, a little bit more extensive, but I will continue to reiterate the qualifications in every video that is associated with that journal. So, uh, and again, what I mean by a meaningful comment is anything that is engaging. So what I'm looking for there is relationship and community. I'm looking for you to share a piece of yourself, um, whether that is to share a favorite tradition, um, maybe a favorite memory um, you had as a child at during the holidays, or um, anything. What is your favorite uh, journal theme that you like to work around? Are there any that you really, really love or some that you really hate? Um, you can share anything you want. What I want is the engagement. I love um, getting to know you guys as well as I love for you to get to know me. So um, the drawing is currently only available to people in the United States and Canada. When I do another drawing in a future subscriber um, giveaway kind of thing, I will be adding something for our international uh, friends. So, but this one is just available to the United States and Canada. So the giveaways will happen, the drawing will happen after this journal is done. I am furiously working on it. I don't know how many more videos we will have, but I also wanted to bring you in to it as much as possible because it's a real great opportunity for me to share new techniques, new ephemera, and things like that with you that maybe you haven't seen before. So <clears throat> in video one, um, and I apologize, I did forget to mention the qualifications in that video. I did make a note on the screen um, that the details would be in the description box as well as they will be in the description box on this video. So in part one, we took our chipboard and we covered it all. So let me just put this stuff aside here for a quick second. So we took our chipboard and we um, co covered, the t covered the front and then we turned it over and we folded everything over. Uh, sorry for the blurriness. We folded everything over and glued it all down and then we glued another piece of the fabric on the inside. And as you can see, we have terrible lines going on here. The inside will be covered with some papers from the kit. So I've got uh, five pieces here that we'll be gluing on today. So that's gonna cover up a lot of this messiness that we've got going on. So, um, and then the front is not, all, is not all that gorgeous either. So we are going to be um, doing a little bit of, of um, uh, initial decoration on the top. I'm not sure exactly um, if we'll put anything more on top of it, but I took this piece of fabric, which is the fabric I wanted to use for this journal, but I had a botched attempt at this new gatefold uh, journal cover situation. So um, this is the only piece I have left. So we're going to put it on here like this. And then I've got this beautiful lace, which I showed in the uh, first video, that I thought would really be a nice complement for this uh, journal because of some of the colors and tones that are on the paper. So I'm going to kind of go like that. And so we're going to be covering this all over. It's just going to go to the edge. It's not going to wrap around. So that's what we're going to do today. But I thought I would, in case you missed the first video and would like just kind of a quick <clears throat> update on um, how this was constructed, um, the journal is going to measure six inches by nine inches with the max page size being five and a half by eight and a half. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> I'm still um, getting over my illness. So <coughs> Pardon me. So the front cover is made of two pieces. So let me turn this back over so you guys can see. It's made of two pieces, one being uh, four inches by nine inches. The second piece, which is this tiny piece over here, 
is one and a half inches by nine inches. The back piece is six by nine, that's this section here. And then we have two spine pieces that measure two and three quarter inches each. So those are the dimensions in case you want to replicate this. It worked very, very, very well on my second go around. On my first one, I tried gluing all of my pieces together using Tyvek tape and I could not cover it. Like it was this stark blue print. I definitely won't do that again. I think I'll get maybe to get some of that Tyvek material and see if I have better luck with that. But that's what I tried and it did not work very well at all. So I thought today we'd do really quickly do a little bit on this journal in terms of getting these papers on and then getting our fabric on the, um, on the front. So I'm gonna start with the big piece because this is measuring, this is the piece that fits here. That is uh, six inches by nine inches and I'm just gonna try to center it here. I'm not a big measurer um, and I did already check to make sure that they are all going to open and close without any restrictions. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on. I'm gonna be using my Fabri-Tac because I am gluing on, um, on fabric. So I'm gonna be very generous, especially around the edges here. And, um, and then we'll fill in the center. We want this to be very secure because we don't want any of that moving and bending about as we continue working with the journal. Sometimes I'll do my journal cover first, and that inspires me to do the um, signatures. Uh, in this case, it just, just so happened that because I was trying a completely new cover that I wanted to just kind of do that right out of the gate. So that's why they're a little bit out of order. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this down. We're using Fabri-Tac so we have some wiggle room. So I'm moving it down because I could see that I, I can almost cover up that um, the frayed fabric here on the bottom and I'm just gonna bend here and make sure everything is good. I'm gonna scooch this over just a tad and then I'm gonna smooth it down. I'm gonna grab my cart here really quick and um, I'm just gonna smooth this out. Make sure it's straight though. We want it to be straight. I don't think I can move it anymore though. Nope, it's okay though. So I'm just gonna use my bone folder and just make sure that glue is all spread out. And I will proceed with the other pieces and just uh, turn the music on for you. So this piece is going to go here. Okay, we're getting to the end here. I want to talk with you a little bit about my plans for the sewing the signatures in and the spine. So I've been really loving the hidden spine. So I will be doing a hidden spine on this journal. And so really in theory, I could have done something different here. This is where the signature will get signatures will get sewn in. But I thought just for the ease of um, the, the videos and process that I would just continue as though I wasn't going to do a hidden spine. But basically what I do is I take a piece of um, heavier a cardstock, well probably a thin chipboard, and I cut it to mat to um, to pretty much match this piece. And then I sew the signatures into that and then I'll glue that down onto here. And I've had great success with that, I love it. I will be right back guys. Sorry about that. 
having some um, coughing fits. Today was my first day back to work. Um, I have been home for, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six days, um, six. So I uh, went back today and I'm feeling pretty good, but that cough, uh, when I talk, that cough gets a little bit exasperating. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that last piece on. And again, I'm checking every time to make sure everything will open and close. Um, well, it seems to be okay. I don't, as I mentioned in pretty much every video, I am not looking for perfection. It's not important to me. So that is our inside cover. So, um, so basically what's going to happen, again, in case you missed the first video, we might attempt this today. I'm not sure. So the, these hinges have screws, but obviously I can't put a screw through, through the journal. So I'm probably going to have to just um, glue this on with some E6000 and just let those holes be okay being there, these holes here on the ends. Um, but we'll see. But that's going to be a great little latch. It's going to be fun. So we're going to go ahead and turn this over. And we're going to go ahead and sew our... our um, excuse me, glue our fabric down as well. So this is going to go on here and I'm just eye spying from top to bottom. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want to go buy more fabric. I have scraps enough to accent the journal and stuff with, but I really don't want to go get another piece. So I thought this was a good compromise. So I'm going to go ahead and try to think about the best way to do this. I think I'm going to make a glue mark here, um, there, and um, there, and here. We won't see that because that's going to fabric's going to be covering it up, and over here. And that way, I can just take my fabric off. I can apply the um, the fabric tack right to the surface and just follow that line. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna probably brush this out. So let me grab a, a brush real quick. Fabri-Tac can be tricky to brush out, but we're gonna try a little bit. So I'm just gonna go all the way across. I'm not too concerned about going too far because um, we're gonna be gluing that really lacy fabric on top of it anyway and it's going to cover the whole the whole bit so my uh, I probably need to get another fabric tech out because this is getting low and I don't know if I'm going to be able to spread it because I can't really get enough out I should have grabbed another one before I started well, I have some muscle here thankfully <laughs> so we're going to try though oh yeah it's doing just fine. We don't need a lot. It's thin fabric, but I am going to focus on the edges here uh, as far as this edge, the outside edges, because um, there's not going to be anything to really stabilize that in theory. I need a little bit more down here. I kind of missed my line, I think. Sorry, this keeps sliding, you guys. Ah, come on. <laughs> Before we do the next piece, I will get my other fabric tech out. We have a couple of bottles, so there we go. Just making sure that we're all the way to this edge. <laughs> it's hard when it gets towards the bottom. Okay, the end of the bottle. So I'm gonna again pick this up. I'm gonna scooch this so you guys can see. My display is backwards, so if you see me going the wrong direction, that's why. So we're going to go ahead and lay this down and we will have a little bit of time to wiggle it around and find our pencil marks like so. Just going to string this puppy, puppy over, pull it, pull it. I just really wanted to use this fabric because I am going to be accenting things with it in the journal with it so I thought it would be cool to get on the cover too so there we go oops silly me 
Okay. Could have probably been more generous with that glue. In fact, um, I'm going to get my bigger bot, my other bottle out, and I'm going to probably re-glue some of that. Oh, I have to get up. I realized I moved it to the other side of the room, unless I've got something else here that I could use. I wonder if I could just use the, no, I don't want to use PVA glue. So give me just a quick moment, guys. Okay, here is a new bottle. Let me just get that going on here. I love my Fabri-Tac. So we should be able to just kind of get rid of that bottle there for a second. And because I noticed that I've got some places that did not really glue very well. So let me just pull this up and see how we're doing. I'm mostly concerned about the ends. concerned about that edge because there's not going to really be anything to protect that edge so there we go that's better lay that back down I'm just gonna kind of spread that out a little bit and so I feel okay about the rest of it I'm pretty sure let me just check this edge too yeah, that's a little bit weak as well. So look at we didn't get much on here. So we're just going to pull that. We're going to pull it all back. We're going to go in and do this right because that's that's not what we want. So let's go in with a little bit more glue. There we go. That should be a little bit better. Let's lay this back down. Just gonna kind of guide it. It's sliding all over the place. <laughs> okay, I feel much, much better about that. Much better. Okay. The next step is gonna be pretty messy because we've got, so this is our front spine top spine so there we go so you can see do you see that the color matching here it's just incredible and this this is fabric from from Joann's like I just totally didn't even plan that <laughs> so I'm gonna get a bigger brush because I feel like I'm not I can't spread that fast enough I'm gonna get my silicone brush that would maybe work better before we put this on because this piece is cut bigger than my um, than the cover because I didn't want to take any chances of it not being big enough. So it's going to line up to the bottom here like that. And I'm going to adhere all of this as best I can. It was not going to be perfect, but we're going to sure try. So I'm going to start from the bottom up. So I'm going to go about this much at a time. So I'm going to get my Fabri-Tac and I'm just going to make my first glue line all the way down here. You do kind of have to move fast with the Fabri-Tac in terms of getting the your main application down because it wants to start setting right away. And I apologize for the project moving like crazy here. So we're going to put that, whoops, put that down. And I'm going to just spread that out a little bit if I can. It should be good especially want it down here on this edge because that's not going to be protected. There we go. I went too far. Did I not go far enough? <laughs> it doesn't take much to, to hold this down though. It's very, very thin. So we're going to go ahead and flip this back down and I'm going to just carefully line it up to the bottom. As, again as best I can so I want it to really meet up I cut that pretty darn straight 
So it's going to go like that. I'm just going to spread it a little bit. I'm going to grab a paper towel. I like to use paper towel to be able to um, press the glue down without everything sticking. So this allows me to kind of do this little this little dance. Okay. And there we go. We can pick that up and we can let that set. I'm going to try to pull it from the bottom or from the top down because our fibers down here at the bottom are much more fragile, uh, which I'll show you that up close here in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this and I'm going to do the opposite. So I went to this line, so now I need to pull this back. I want to be very careful though that that doesn't stick there because um, that would be not good. So there we go. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to try to cover the rest of this really quick. So you see how I didn't have to really worry about that base fabric because this is all going to get more solidified here. So just spreading that out as best I can though. It's not going to show through at all so that's a bonus. There we go. So now we can get to the finish line here. So we're going to pull that down and I'm again I'm just going to kind of pull it, stretch it a little bit, not too much. And we're going to use our paper towels again, like so. And it looks like we need to go up a little bit more because our glue, our area that we were gluing was bigger. So let me just adjust this really quick and put it up there so we can get all of that landscape. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to push gently just to kind of get all those fibers to stick down into the fabric tack. Mm -hmm. It's going to be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. There we go. Off we go. Just going to set that over there. And um, probably should be pulling from the inside out so I don't disturb the, again, those really um, fragile fibers on the edges. So there's that. And so what I wanted to show you was just the, the, the detail on the bottom of this lace. Look at that. Is that just absolutely beautiful? It's so counterintuitive to a fall journal, though, I know. But um, as I've mentioned in other videos, I don't... Uh, fall is a really hard season for me, so I'm really trying to reframe it. So I'm doing things in a way that makes me feel comfortable, um, which is um, not the popular way to do things, uh, especially with a fall journal. So I am going to move this because I don't want to get my uh, project here in the uh, glue with all these brushes and everything over here so I'm just going to move that over and now we're going to go ahead and try to trim this off so I'm just going to turn this all a little bit and using my sewing scissors here and I'm sorry that this is not going to all be on camera or in frame rather come on cut Okay, this is this is persnickety little lace here. It doesn't matter if it's completely even. Oh, I think it's the angle, and I do apologize. This is going to be off, out of view for you because I'm kind of going off of my table, and that's the best way for me to get the angle that I need. So there's that. And that's going to make beautiful cluster right there. I'm just trying to trim this up a little bit. Definitely needed the sewing scissors for this. Okay, I'm going to finish trimming this and I will be right back. Okay, getting to the end of that task. 
Okay, so I may have a little bit more trimming up to do. It's a little bit rough, but this is what she looks like. So this is the, oops, this is the bottom. Uh, nope, this is, this is, this is the bottom, and this is the top. And that way I can tell is because my larger flap is here. So we do have some glue showing here. So I'm just going to try to rub that out a little bit if I can. Um, I'm not liking that. Oh, I see some of it's white from the fabric. So that's okay. So I was just thinking that I also do need to be careful about my closure uh, with, with the closure in mind that this journal does not become an alligator mouth because otherwise it'll put pressure on this gatefold. So I need to train this a little bit more. It's a little bit stiff. So I'm going to try to turn it and go the opposite direction a little bit, maybe. I don't really want to disturb everything too much. So I'm just going to kind of train that that way. And I, I don't think I'm going to put the hinge on today. And the reason why is because I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to clip this to train this to stay because it's kind of bulky. Um, and so off camera, I will go ahead and add my hinge. Um, and my husband can always come in if he can figure out a way to cut off uh, some of the screw part of it. I don't think a screw is going to work at all because it really only has chipboard to screw through and I don't think it's going to be good enough. So basically this is going to go here and this is going to go here. Nope, other way. And this is going to go here. And this is going to go this way and then when it closes it goes in like that. Oh, that's upside down. What? Okay, let me think about this a second. Let me just show you with my hands because that's too hard to hold on to. So it's got one of these little levers on it, which I think are just absolutely phenomenal. So it's going to go like this. And then when it closes, this slides in here and it's going to keep that closed. Isn't that amazing? So, um, but I do have the small screws and I'm wondering, my husband is pretty handy. He might have some good ideas, but letting him get you know, like do something with the journal since it's already put together. I'm not sure. Um, I know that uh, E6000 will hold this, so I may just go that route. So now that I have it together here, let me show you if I can do this one handed. <laughs> so it's going to go like that. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. So that is it for today, guys. I hope that you'll check back. Um, and again, the qualifications for the drawing um, are going to be down in the video description box as well. Um, go back to each of the playlists, Autumn Garden Journal and Autumn Diary Journal. Leave a comment um, and like the video and you'll be entered into the drawing. And when I get this journal done is when we'll do the drawing for the grand prize, this one, and then the second prize, which is the Autumn Diary. The third prize is the Altoid Mini Tin, the Altoid Tin Mini Journal, which is a uh, the regular Altoid metal, metal um, boxes, and I made this little cottage charm journal in it. So that will be the third prize. That's going to be a random draw, just kind of across the channel. I may be just, I might even pull it from the subscriber list. I'm not sure, haven't decided, but that one will be more random. And the reason for that is because that project was already done before we hit the 2000. I just thought it would be a perfect uh, prize for the giveaway. So there we go. So I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.